Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Nancy. We're empty nesters living our second phase of life to the fullest. Our goal is to give you the best hints, tips, and tricks so you can live your best second phase of life. Today we have something a little different for you. That's right. We attended the Royal Caribbean World, uh, excuse me, Wonder of the Seas Trade Cruise event. And what that is is where they invite people to learn about all things Royal Caribbean. And they had a very special presentation we were extremely interested in. That is their uh, presentation on the World Cruise. So if you haven't heard yet, Royal Caribbean is putting together the largest world cruise ever, 274 days all around the world, all seven continents. And today they uh, was the one year um, until sailing. So December 10th, 2023, they'll be sailing. And so they got together, um, Michael Bailey, uh, Jason Liberty, the whole Royal Caribbean staff to talk to some of the cruisers about the World Cruise and answer some questions. And we recorded the whole event for you today. So enjoy this presentation and welcome to Living Phase Two. Well, a very good morning, everyone. How are you today? My name is Ken Rush. I am Director of Entertainment Programming, Activities, and Media at Royal Caribbean. And it is great to see everybody here one more time, because I know we've asked you a couple times, but can we see where all of our world cruisers are? Would you mind just standing for one second? And let's give them a big round of applause, all the people that are going on the world cruise for all 274 days, come on! How exciting is that? All right, take a seat. But we also have got our travel advisors here. We want to welcome them. And we have a couple of other looky-loos. People are in here looking. What are they doing in here? I want to see what's happening. And maybe they want to buy one of those segments. And remember, I know you're going to be the world cruiser out there, but you got to help these newbies that come on for just a little segment at a time. Since you're going to know the lay of the land. But right now, we've got some questions. We've got some top questions that some of you have already asked. We're going to open up for some questions and answers in just a minute. But how about bringing up the main man himself, our president and CEO of Royal Caribbean International, Mr. Michael Bailey. Thank you, Ken. Good morning, everybody. So we, do, we know there's a lot of questions, and hopefully we're going to start answering them for you today. Um, but I w I'd like to make a few comments and introduce a few people, well, maybe more than a few people to you. First of all, I have to say I'm very jealous of you all. Uh, I think you guys are doing a great thing. I mean, if, if I could, I would be on that world cruise with you. I think it's an amazing adventure. It truly is a once in a lifetime trip and it is the ultimate world cruise. I mean, that's how we thought about it and that's what we're trying to create and deliver for you. There's nothing comparable in terms of world cruises. It's the Mac Daddy of world cruises. So um, it's also fair to say that we've never done this before. Um, so you have a lot of questions, and in many cases you ask us questions, we don't know the answer to the question. But I can assure you that we're incredibly committed to make sure that we have all of the answers to all of the questions when you need to have those answers. So, and uh, that's something that we're very focused on. But it's, a, it's an adventure for us as well. Obviously we're a global cruise company, 50 years, we have ships all over the world, we know what we're doing, don't worry, we're pretty good at what we do. But the World Cruise is a new adventure for us as well. And we want to make sure you guys have an amazing time. I do want to introduce, uh, I'm going to ask actually my colleagues um, to stand up one at a time and introduce themselves. And pretty much everybody who introduces themselves is on the World Cruise team. They have obviously their, you know, their, like Cara is our CMO for the company. But everybody here is part of the World Cruise team. We have a dedicated team of people who are focused on making sure that we can deliver you a really wonderful experience. So if I can ask my colleagues to, you know, starting with who, 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 sending got a mic. Oh, um, by the way, starting with your ship's captain. 
Thank you, Michael. Uh, I'm Captain Stig. I just came up to seven a couple of days ago to uh, join this event, going on vacation after these. My counterpart is Captain Chell, that is currently on board taking care of the ship. And how this will work is that I will be starting you off in uh, December. I will be on board for the first leg up to Los Angeles on February 11th. And then uh, Captain Chell will do the Asia Pacific part, which is his speciality. He's been doing it before on the Legend of the Seas. And I will come back and join you again in Cyprus to uh, do the end of the work cruise with the cold waters, which I love. Uh, Northern waters, uh, Baltic, uh, Norwegian coast, Iceland and Greenland. And then we will round it up at the end of the year. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nibu Saeed. I'm the, I'll be one of the hotel directors on board. I'll be on that segment, uh, Asia Pacific region. And uh, uh, thank you all for being part of this uh, wonderful uh, once in a lifetime experience, exciting journey. Look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Philip Ashcroft. I'm a hotel director also, together with Nibu. I'm originally from Liverpool in England, but I'm now residing in the natural state of Arkansas, USA. <laughs> it's a long story. Anyway, I'm, um, like, like Nibu, I'm looking after the hotel department. I've uh, been fortunate enough to be picked. Uh, both myself and Nibu have great uh, world cruising experience, and uh, we look forward to putting that into effect uh, on board Serenade. Uh, I'll, I'm actually, when I leave here uh, tomorrow, I'll be going back, going to Serenade, uh, go back to Serenade to, uh, to kick it off as far as the, the, the prep and the, the preparing on board. But uh, we look forward to seeing you on board, and um, yeah, let's get this world crew started. Hi everyone. Whoa, sorry. <laughs> I'm uh, Aurora Yera Rodriguez, or Lolly. And I'm responsible for guest experience and guest communications. And I know that there's been a lot going on with the World Cruise. And we've kicked off a brand new team uh, that's going to be led up by Nicole Lucas, who has owned guest communications for a really long time for our brand. And you saw a lot of changes come and a lot of good changes. Um, and that'll still be with Naomi, who's been kicking butt with all the World Cruise operational stuff, and Amy Southgate who will still help us with all of our travel partner communications and keeping all those lines open. And Kayla Burnell, who you can harass about all the guest comms while on board. And we're here to help and support you. I actually really wanted to go on the world cruise. I mentioned it to Michael, he said no at first, but then he thought about the opportunity of getting rid of me for 274 days. And he's like, well, maybe you should go. Actually, it wasn't you. I was hoping Ken would go on the world cruise. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I'm so excited for you, and Al, I'm going to join you for at least a segment, so you're stuck with me. Morning, everybody. My name is James Van Fleet. I will be your meteorologist for the World Cruise. I will actually be on board with you for a few sections. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but we want to keep things moving as we have a lot to talk to you about this morning. But very happy to be here with our CEO and very proud to be a part of this World Cruise 23-24. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Lochran, originally from Ottawa, Canada. I reside now in Miami, Florida for the last 20 years. I'm the director of short excursions for Royal Caribbean International, and I have a team back in Miami creating and working with tour operators globally on the products in the different various destinations. So we look forward to welcome you on board. Thank you. Good morning. Um, following Lali's path, my name, wait for it. Ivan Danilo de la Rosa Lozano. <laughs> so I'll be happy to just remember Dr. Ivan. So I've been with the company for 18 years. Uh, 14 of those practicing medicine in our ships. So happy for that. Uh, currently, I am your senior manager for health services. And I'm very excited to be here with you guys. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am Michael Goldner. I lead the revenue management team for Royal Caribbean International. So I was the guy who set the prices for your cruise. So you can either thank me or blame me for, for your price. But uh, genuinely want to thank each and every one of you for uh, making this incredible commitment to our brand and our uh, this incredible cruise. 
and uh, wishing you an amazing trip. So thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kara Wallace. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer. I've been with the company for 17 years. And me and my team are going to help support Lolly and all of the guest communications, but also Nancy and Courtney and the loyalty program. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Vicki Freed, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Sales. And I work with both uh, guests as well as our travel partners. And so we value both uh, groups of people. And we want to say we are super excited to welcome you aboard the Ultimate World Cruise one year from today. We can't wait. So we're just as excited as you. Hi everyone, my name is Lincoln D'Souza, Vice President of Food and Beverage. I, I lead our beverage, restaurant, and culinary teams. We are excited to bring some delicious food and beverage and cultural experiences as part of this world cruise. So thank you all for being here. Hi everybody, Jesse Hopfinger. I've been with Royal Caribbean 15 years. I run outboard revenue and uh, customer service. What, one of the big things is a casino, so anything you guys need, let me know. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start all over again with this row? I'm kidding. Uh, we're going to go over here. Hi, I'm uh, Raymond Scheider. I am Vice President Hotel Operations with Royal. I'm almost 40 years with the company. Uh, 20 of those is hotel director on ships. So fortunate, you know, we're fortunate to have really great uh, talent and experience for you. Uh, I'll be overseeing the planning and the um, execution of your onboard experience. So whatever we need to do to get the ship ready for you and uh, everything around it. Uh, there's team here and many more which you don't see today are all very committed to have all and everything ready for you in exactly one year from now. So thanks and welcome. Good morning everybody and welcome on board. My name is Naomi and I've been with the company for 26 years. 16 of those were spent at sea. And I've had the privilege to be working on the World Cruise as a project manager on Raymond's team. And so I'm looking forward to experiencing this journey with everybody. Thank you. Good morning and welcome everyone. And, and thank you for uh, spending a year with us. Uh, I'm Sean Tracy. I'm the Senior Vice President of Hotel Operations. So I have the uh, distinct privilege to work with the likes of Naomi, Raymond, Lincoln, Paul, Jesse, uh, How about Ken, and, and even Ken. <laughs> um, no, uh, we're really excited about this. I also, I was born in Brazil. I lived in Africa, uh, Spain, Ireland, Australia, and in Singapore, so. Uh, and, they're, and they're still looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> So if you have questions about some of the destinations, hopefully I can help as well. So welcome and uh, thank you. And uh, I think we're ready to get started with the... Uh... Oh wait, sorry. So we're also gonna introduce ourselves. I'm Nancy Ramos and I lead the Crown and Anchor on Society program. Really excited to actually create an entirely new experience for all our Crown and Anchor members. This is a different sailing. So we're gonna do different things on the World Cruise. Great to have you. Hi everyone, I'm Courtney Brandt. Um, I work under the leadership of Nancy Ramos as the director of Crown and Anchor Society. I think I know the answer to this, but do we have any Crown and Anchor Society members in here? So yeah, I, I'm relatively new to the company, but not new to the industry, and very, very passionate about the Royal brand. I'm actually a Diamond member myself, so <laughs> hoping to be a pinnacle one day. But I'm um, very excited to help plan this and give you guys some amazing benefits throughout your journey. I gotta say one thing about Courtney, I, I hope you don't mind, but um, Courtney recently joined Royal Caribbean and um, when we were talking to Courtney about taking on this role, um, she, was, she was working for a competitor at NCL, I didn't say, <laughs> I, I didn't, I'm not going to say which, which competitor it is, NCL, uh, but uh, Courtney was, was working for the competitor and uh, so we were, we were talking and <laughs> And, and Courtney said, you know, I'm a diamond plus. I, I do, do work for NCL, but I sail with Royal Caribbean. <laughs> and, and as soon as she said that, it was like, ding, hired. <laughs> so it's great to have her on board. I think we have our final gentleman to say hello. 
Hi, good morning. My name is John Pettit, and I'm the Director for Disability Inclusion and ADA Compliance for Royal Caribbean International. So my role for you on the World Cruise is to help coordinate you know, your accommodations for um, your disability and other needs on board the ship. We'll work closely with medical and shore assistance to get you the great and the most accessible cruise experience in the world. Thank you. Thank you. So we have... Um, Actually, my book, we're going to start here. We're going to ask all oh, the okay. cruisers to stand up and tell them. I'm kidding. <laughs> Over to you, Michael. So, um, we've, obviously, we've got a lot of questions, and we want, we want to respect your time as well. We've got a cocktail party later this afternoon, so we've got more time to talk. We've taken all of the questions, and we've got now a list of all of those questions. So probably we'll cover today about 80% of the questions that you may have. And then also during that process of answering those questions, we'll be able to tell you about the communications that we've established going forward, how you can ask questions and so forth. And hopefully when, we, when this meeting concludes today, you'll have a degree of understanding and comfort of how we're gonna now manage forward for this year. You know, we're one year away from the cruise, so we obviously want to increase our communication and make sure that you, or any questions that you have, you can get to us and we can respond to them. And, and, and if, they're, you know, if they have significant meaning in terms of issues operationally, then we can come back to you with solutions and what have you. And so that's really, I think, our intention today. So I'm gonna hand it over to Ken, and I think Ken's gonna run us through uh, all of the questions. I, I will have to excuse myself. Um, not that I don't want to be here for the questions, but uh, I've got my family on board and they're all in a cabana in Coco Cay and they keep texting me saying, Dad, where the hell are you? Uh, so you're going to have to excuse me. I, I really want to be here for the rest of the meeting, but I, I got to go see the kids. So, uh, But I'll see you this afternoon for the cocktail party. And again, I'm very jealous of you all. So over to you, Ken. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael Bailey, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Nancy, actually, hold on to that microphone, Nancy, because you might have a couple of questions to answer throughout. Like, for instance, this one is not up, going to be on the top 14, but somebody was just asking me, can you start the World Cruise and be a Pinnacle member by the end of it? Yes, you can. Yes. Isn't that amazing? It is. Yes. You can start without even anything and then be a Pinnacle member. No, buddy. not with anything. You can start as a, as a diamond. Diamond, 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 diamond. Okay, diamond. okay, I was going to say, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. But we do have the top 14 questions that were already written in. Uh, so I think we're going to bring that up. Uh, so when can, again, we're going to call upon some of these people that are in charge of these areas. So, Paul, do you want to talk about this? Perfect. So we will have a... Um, we want to launch our brochure, an electronic brochure, on January 27th. And you can also book the shore excursions on Royal Caribbean's website on January 27th. We've been creating a number of tours. First segment, there's 36 different destinations. We've got over 220 tours, new, still being created. So that'll be available on the website for booking. And we've created, started something, something new for you. And excited is the electronic brochure per segment that we'll have available for starting with the Americas, going to Asia Pacific on March 17th, booking and brochure. Also the brochure will be emailed to you and, and the booking is available. And then the East, uh, Middle East and Mediterranean, April 14th, May 19th for Europe and beyond. If you wanted to create something uh, private, special for you, customized, curated, we have a private journey team that's available. We'll have, give you access to those individuals to make those requests. Do you want to do something a little extra special? Something that we don't offer. We can do that for you. And crown and anchor. So we've got the seven uh, complimentary wonders of the world. These are the new wonders of the world, starting with Chichen Itza in Mexico, Christ Redeemer in Brazil, Machu Picchu in, in Peru, the Great Wall of China, leaving from Tianjin, getting into Beijing, Petra from Aqaba, Jordan, Taj Mahal in India, and the Colosseum in Rome, Italy. Of these five, uh, there's five that are day excursions, and there's two, the Taj Mahal and the Machu Picchu, which are multi-day excursions, which will leave from one port, go to Machu Picchu, and you'll come back on another port of call, you'll reboard the ship. So some of those excursions are two evenings. So Taj Mahal is very similar, because they're inland. They'll take uh, their flights, train, transportation, and staying at hotels as well, all part of the package. You, as a um, uh, Platinum Crown and Anchor Society member, you've uh, achieved that by June 14th, 2023. 
you're automatically enrolled in these seven new wonders of the world. If you decide not to take them, you can opt out and receive an onboard credit by about the same time, June 14th. Any other? Raymond's going to take this one. Uh, will we be visiting Russia and Ukraine? Well, as it stands right now, no. We have taken Stalingrad out and uh, in the Black Sea. Vladivostok, I think, was on. Um, we're still going in the Black Sea, and we will announce in a few days exactly what the replacement ports will be. We're still vetting them for feasibility and the nautical elements. Um, like with everything else, we continuously and constantly watch what's going on in the world to make sure wherever we go or wherever you go, uh, we are safe and there is nothing that in any way can uh, be you know, conflicting with uh, your safety foremost. So uh, this is just the world as it is right now. Hopefully it's in a better and different place next year and hopefully nothing else comes up. Are we sailing to China? Yes, we certainly plan uh, very much with it. I mean, who doesn't want to go to the Great Wall of China? But our uh, managing director from uh, Shanghai is actually on this cruise, and I talked to him yesterday, and there's very good indicators that also China is relaxing on their policies, uh, which again will allow far more uh, tourism opportunities. So we are fully planning with going to China uh, when you know, in a year, year and a half, when we're supposed to be there. Thank you, Raymond. All right, this next question is for Michael. Okay. Over. Okay. Uh, how can I take advantage of the 10% discount if paid in full? So, um, I, hopefully you know about this opportunity, but um, if you pay your final payment, that's you, obviously everyone put down their deposit, you've got your balance due, I think 180 days prior to the cruise, but we recognize what a huge financial commitment that is. We wanted to provide a little bit of an incentive to pay early. If you pay your final payment by January 6th, then we take 10% off of your entire cruise fare. Um, and if you wanna know exactly what that amount is, you can. we will give you an individualized, because obviously different people pay different amounts. We'll give you an individualized um, summary of what that 10% discount is. So. Want to make sure everyone is aware of that opportunity. Again, January 6th is the deadline. Uh, and again, it's a 10% discount off of the entire cruise fare. So how do we get the individual summary? How do we, Molly, call? Do they have a number to call? Yes, there is a number. Hi, everyone. So some of the stuff, like I mentioned, we've created a new power team to help um, with all the communications and all the training and all the challenges. Uh, some of the things that we've already done, it's just started for one week, is that we've improved how taking that 10% discount works. So just call into the uh, 800 number or the World Cruise, press your prompt, and you'll get an agent that can help you with that specific number. We're also opening up a, a dedicated email inbox for you as well. So you'll be getting all of that information from us shortly. Sound good? Even if you have a travel agent. Even if you have a travel agent. All right. Okay, this next question is back to Raymond. Yeah, the Serenade. Uh, well, we have the captain here and the hotel directors. They are looking after the ship right now. We obviously have a lot of ongoing and focused refurbishment plans for the entire or throughout the entire next year on the technical side, but also on the stateroom side, like we bringing in new, new beds from the bed frame to the mattress to the soft goods. We having a large contingency of maintenance people on there just to look at everything we can uh, throughout the year. Uh, we are you know, putting the latest uh, communication equipment on board the ship. We will have Starlink uh, on board, which, uh, you, know, I, you know, when it comes to communication, I always have a little disclaimer, because I, I, you know, I've been in all parts and I go to all parts of the world, but even Starlink will not work everywhere. There are some regions, they do their own thing and it's getting, you know, it's not always that uh, plain sailing but we'll cover it up with secondary and other technologies to make sure we keep you connected throughout. But uh, once again, coming back to how will Serenade be refreshed, we, we're looking at, at all aspects to make sure you have a comfortable home for those 270 days you're with us. 
We are also changing the in-cabin refrigerators, uh, just to mention one. We have, uh, have committed ourselves to build a few uh, laundrettes on board, so you know, if you want to do your own laundry, we will provide those opportunities. You know, so we, we look at everything and, uh, you know, where's feasible, we cannot, you know, we can't go as far and replace the whole cabin, that's unfortunately not possible, but we do everything with it, so thank you. Uh, we, are, we are in discussion with our IT team, sorry, the question was, can I bring my fire stick, meaning you want to connect to the TV and get the uh, programming. We're looking through those abilities right now. Uh, the current TVs do not allow for that. Uh, so we would have to see how and if we can replace them. And also there's always, um, even on these ships, um, there's always a data issue we need to resolve with our internal IT department to make sure we, you know, for obvious uh, reasons, we need to sure we don't get open our internal systems to something we don't want to have. But we'll, this is one of the questions we will answer for you in the next weeks or months as soon as we have a clear understanding of what we can do for you. Another uh, question for you, Raymond, uh, please. I have a question. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to... Um, We're going to open it up for questions and answers after we go questions. through these top questions, everybody, okay? We just wanted to cover those which we know already and then we get, you know, then we have a whole hour or as long as it takes. Um, when will the onboard storage policy be available? And I guess you're talking about how many suitcases you can bring and where to restore them. Uh, I, I was in discussion, actually in negotiation with the captain. And he told me which areas we can store and not store. So here is uh, what we have. With the new beds we're going to introduce, they're going to have enough uh, room below to easily store four suitcases. We can also commit ourselves to store an additional suitcase per, per person in a separate area. But this needs to be an empty one because once we store it there, you get it back whenever you, you know, it's not for uh, having anything in it and come every two days and tell us you want something from it. It's just the empties we can store off-site in a special uh, storage location on board. So that, what did I just say? One, two, three, four, five, six suitcases is for two people. If anybody else has any additional needs, let us know. We we'll see what we need to consider them. Okay, next question is for Lincoln. No. no. Um, yes, so we're going to have uh, food that's cultural from the different areas. We try and represent some of the areas you're visiting. We also want to deliver comfort foods because I'm sure at some point you're going to just want a grilled cheese sandwich. Uh, so we're going to have some of that. In chops, we're going to try and bring local meats. So as an example, if you're in Brazil, we'll bring some picanha, that kind of stuff on. So you have that ability to have those experiences. We are also working with our beverage team, our beverage suppliers, as we go into local areas, try and bring a local beer, a local wine, a local spirit, some caipirinhas in Brazil, or you know, uh, uh, white wine from New Zealand, or any of those kind of things we're going to try and bring on board for you to try and enhance the experience. We're going to have two chefs on board. Uh, and we're also going to try and have uh, chefs from the region uh, be available on the ship so that we can try and make sure the food's really authentic on board, matching the places you're visiting as well. I'm sure there's lots of questions about food and beverage, and I'll be happy to take them after that. Thank you, Lincoln. This one, next one is for Dr. Ivan. Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I worked with Raymond in a couple of ships. Uh, I have a lot of respect for Raymond. Thank you. So this is an excellent question, uh, which uh, immunization will be needed. Then we work, we will work based on local regulations. So some vaccines uh, will be linked to the country we go. Maybe, for instance, a yellow vaccine will be required. <coughs> and for sure, in terms of COVID vaccines, we will require that every guest, five and older, be up to date in terms of COVID vaccines. That's the information I have for today in this topic. So if you have more questions, we can discuss that in the future. Thank you. Next questions for you as well, doctor. Okay, and I'm gonna go through the topic again. So <laughs> let me go through the question. Um, how we like get medications and prescription refills? Excellent point. You're gonna be for a long period of time away from home. So our recommendations is uh, that you visit your doctor, discuss this plan with your doctor, at least 
get three months supply of medication. Now, ideally you get the nine month supply or the duration of the cruise. We know this is challenging. And for that purpose, we have engaged our supply chain in procuring any medication, the most common medications, brand names and uh, generics. Closer to the sailing date, we will be in contact with you to try to get a little bit more feedback and to let you know what medications we can get you and what medications we cannot get you. So still ongoing. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. We're gonna go with, uh, Naomi's gonna talk about this one, I believe. Hi, everybody. I know that this is a question that's on the forefront for many people, which visas do we need? So we have partnered with our, our CIBT visas, which is a long-standing partner from Royal Caribbean who has helped many of our guests on their journeys along the way. As visas can be very personal, it, depends on nationalities and different requirements. We will share with you once we are aware of which visas are able to be retrieved upon arrival, but there are some visas that need to be obtained prior to departure. Um, we will start communicating and we suggest that you also start looking into this in the, towards the middle of next year, because obtaining visas at this time is too early. Yeah, and you know, I know from my side going to China, we need a visa and that always takes uh, a little while and they only give it to you for 30 days or whatever you're there, especially for the first or second time you're doing it. So um, yeah, the visa is here. Well, more to come, we'll, we'll work very closely with this company. They're very, very good. They know what a, a global um, experience requires and they also know by nationality what is needed at, you know, because those requirements do change as well, unfortunately. Okay, this next question is for Nancy and Courtney. Hi everyone. Um, so the question is whether there will be additional amenities for our sweet guests and our very loved Pinnacle Club members. Um, the reality is the benefit offering that we have today maybe won't make as much sense on the world cruise. For example, do you want to have the same top tier event every single week with the same people being recognized? Maybe not. <laughs> um, so what we're actually working on right now is a fully exclusive and curated benefits offering that is completely different than what you're used to today. We know we've had a few questions already on um, beverages and Wi-Fi. Our Pinnacles, for example, get both of those today, but they're already included in the full world cruise booking. So things like that, we're trying to find ways to um, give you something that's different and exciting and, and fully exclusive to this journey. So stay tuned. Our plan is to announce this um, around summer of next year. Thank you, Courtney. We're going to go back to Michael Goldner on this one. Okay. Uh, how will the shareholder benefit work? Um, do we have any shareholders here? Oh, great. We're all owners of the company here. Uh, so I'm sure many of you know that we have uh, we have an existing program, right, where if you are a shareholder, um, you're eligible for an onboard credit when you sail with Royal Caribbean. Obviously, this is a very unique cruise, and so we took a, a unique approach on how we're going to apply the shareholder benefit to the program. Because there are essentially four segments that comprise of the entire world cruise, we're essentially going to take the value of the shareholder benefit, which is $250 per booking, and we're going to multiply it times four. So if you're a shareholder, you can you are eligible for $1,000 per booking onboard credit. By the way, if you don't want to use the money on board, it's entirely refundable, meaning if you don't use it, we'll give it back to you in cash. So uh, everyone who's a shareholder, again, eligible for uh, the $1,000 onboard credit. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Well, we're going to open it up for question and answers, but I want you guys to do me a favor. Kind of easy to remember, but maybe even write it down, take a picture with your phone. So that way in a week from now, a month from now, two months from now, if you suddenly have a question, that's what you need to do. Go ahead and email it to that particular address right there, and then we can get back to you because we have dedicated teams, as we said. So we're going to open it up right now for some questions and answers right now live here. Just go ahead and raise your hand and tell us a little bit about yourself. 
well, not really about yourself, but just tell us who you are, where you're from, and what your question might be. We'll start right over here. My name is Sebastian from Miami. I'm originally from Argentina. I don't know if you can tell by the accent. I'm so excited to be going on this cruise. First, thank you, Royal Caribbean, for putting this together. It's the first time that as a family, when we are taking, we have twins. My wife is not here, they are in Coco Cay. The kids were so excited to be on the, on the slides. But we are so excited that we finally have a work cruise to, that we can take a family. And I know that with that, it's going to have a lot of challenges. So my question was about that, because we have eight years old, they're going to be nine. Um, what, and this is every time we said we're going to go on a, on a work cruise, everybody's like, oh, you're taking the kids out of school. And we say, yes, but we don't know what we're going to do. And the how is what's going to come during this year. And that's what was my question, to see what as a family cruise, what are the options that we're gonna have for on board and also for education? We are so excited. So, yeah. Thank you, Sebastian, thank you. Well, we actually have my one of my colleagues here with us. She is our Director of Youth, Family, and Sports. Jeanette, I think it's time for you to answer that one, right? Jeanette Lowry, come on over so they can okay, see Okay, thank you. Well, I know Sebastian, so that's a plus to start. Hi, Sebastian. And I know the twins, our kids go to school together. Um, yeah, so great question. Is there anyone else that's cruising with kids, teens? Oh, nice, awesome, okay. So, great question. We, of course, have, and if you haven't had a chance, make sure you pop up and see Adventure Ocean here, as well as our teen spaces. So we do have an amazing program that we offer. Um, one of the bigger questions I know that's been coming up is how, how can we support you on your homeschool journey, right? You are pulling the kids from school. Um, it is important that they stay connected. So because there are so few kids, we do have facilities we're gonna make available for study time, homeschool time, um, and we're literally gonna work with each family individually. What do you need from us? We'll have supplies, um, we, and we can really gather all of that beforehand um, just to make sure you use your allocated luggage pieces for your clothes and attire. We will take care of that for you, right? So we can have your paper, pencils, glue, scissors, anything you need for homeschool projects. Um, and then of course we do have staff on hand that can support and assist. Um, we are not providing curriculum per se, we're there for the fun. Um, so we'll give mom and dad a break and, and do all of that. Um, but we will have facilities for you. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> so Sebastian is looking for a personal uh, tutor. Side job. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Sebastian, you're on mute. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Sebastian. All right, we have we've got here. She homeschooled her kids. She's just volunteered as tribute. Yeah. Very good. All right, I think you have another question over there, Amy. Yes. yes. And do we have some people with microphones on this side as soon as it starts circulating down here, as well as up on the top? Hi, right. Joe Cantu from Fort Lauderdale. So uh, I was talking to Nancy Ramos on the President's Cruise, and you know, she said, you know, that Michael Bailey is the guy who created this whole idea. Said, hey, I want to do a world cruise, and he just kind of said, okay, you try to knock it out. But anyway, one of the questions that I was talking to Nancy about is I had met other people who said, uh, hey, so is there any way for, say, on a, a week segment or two week segment to bring a daughter or son or something to just, you know, say the pyramid segment or something like that to come, you know, for two weeks. And back then she said, you know, uh, right now that's, that's not possible and we're not really thinking about that. She said, but maybe later on, you know, maybe next year we'll start to think about that. And, and she said, there's, you know, in, in my head, I thought, oh, you should be able to do that. And she said, well, when you think about it, you've got to bring on extra food. you got to, you know, take all the, the, the visas and other things into account and everything like that. So she says, you know, it is kind of a, an unusual, uh, you know, request. So we haven't really addressed it. Maybe we'll address it next year. Yeah, uh, it's a great question. Um, so, believe it or not, the, the World Cruise is actually 17 individual cruises that are put together to make the World Cruise. Of course, we've opened the World, the world Cruise, um, which as Michael mentioned before, we're almost sold out of the World Cruise uh, portion of the ship. Um, we, of course, have the four segments that are open as well. And the next couple of months, we're very focused on selling those segments. We will most likely get to a point in time in a couple months 
where we will be able to open up some of those individual cruises. Um, and so to answer your question, I do think there will be an opportunity to be able to invite family and friends to join you for as little as, again, one of the 17 cruises that make up the, the World Cruise. We haven't opened those yet because we are preserving as many of the cabins as we can for the World Cruise and of course the segments. But as soon as we kind of work our way through it and we're done selling the segments, I'm, I uh, fully anticipate we're still going to have some cabins left over that we'll be able to open up for the individual segment. So stay tuned. I know a lot of this is I, we're a year away and there's still a lot that we're, we're kind of working through. Stay tuned. I do fully anticipate we'll be able to open up uh, individual cruises for people to join me. Yeah. All right, right here. Jan Pratt from Wachula, Florida. Um, my husband heard that um, we can only have one device on Wi-Fi per cabin. I hope that isn't true because I manage our rental properties from my device and he also does some, you know, he does our emails to let everybody know how we are. Well, uh, the, the, what you, one of your benefits as World Cruises, there's two devices per cabin. Uh, it's included, and if you want additional devices, um, Jesse and team will make that available. There will probably a little fee attached to it, but uh, it's one device, two devices by carbon uh, to begin with, and that's fully included in for you for the World Cruise Guest. Okay, uh, just again, everybody, if you've got a question, you've got to get the attention to one of these people that are in the purple blue and the purple up there and once you see them let them know that you've seen them but you've got a couple of people maybe in front of you all right we're going to go ahead and go back over here to this side we're going to rotate everybody we'll be rotating through go ahead yes good morning my name is lloyd hall i'm from northern british columbia canada so we deal with peso, the canadian peso up there my question is um i'd like to take advantage of course of this 10 percent by paying a year early in my case, I'm looking at close to a quarter of a million dollars in Royal Caribbean's hands. What happens if our uh, brilliant politicians shut the world down again? Uh, Royal Caribbean is now sitting on a quarter million by dollars. Uh, I'm not really interested that much in uh, future cruise credits. <laughs> That's my question. Well. Um... <laughs> Um, I, I can, uh, first of all, thank you very much for, uh, for the cruise and the, the money that you've invested in this cruise. Um, I can safely say that um, if, you know, knock on wood, if something were to happen where that, that impacted the cruise, obviously you would be refunded uh, money. Let's, we're fully anticipating of being able to put on the cruise. As you heard, there may be certain destinations that we have planned that because of world events, we may have to find alternative ports. That's just kind of the nature of our, our business. Um, but we, we um, fully anticipate on being able to hit every destination that we've listed. And if, again, by some ungodly event happens that we had to cancel or modify in such a dramatic way, then we would make that refund available for you. Okay. We're gonna go in the back over here. and we're from Phoenix, Arizona. And um, if we're not eligible for the seven wonders or the wonders, how do we get to go on them and what are the costs gonna be? So, so right now the eligibility for the seven new wonders are specifically for the ultimate world cruise uh, guests that have purchased the entire uh, portion of it. The, we'll have the other four <laughs> wonders you heard about, which is Iguazu Falls, um, Great Barrier Reef, the Pyramids of Giza, and the Temple of Artemis, which those are for purchase. They will be for purchase in the segments that'll launch. So initially for the seven, just pending on that opting out option and availability, down the line we could, we're considering putting those for, for sale. So that's a, a very good question. And I hope I've answered that. So at the moment, eligibility for the, those that have reached the status for the seven, the other four for purchase, uh, the ones I mentioned, and we'll definitely look at those ones depending on the availability, what we have, 
for them for purchase. So we'll definitely consider that. And if you Thank qualify you. as a platinum member by mid June, which how many people here are platinum and above? Raise your hands. Yeah, easy to achieve. So if you want to come back and sail with us, we do have allocated space for our platinum and above guests for this included amenity. So we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Now all the way to the very back. wasn't finished with her question. She was asking, what if you're not platinum? Then you have to take a lot of cruises within the next year. <laughs> not that many, not that many. Um, what's your status now? I mean, if you don't mind sharing. Basically, we have seven points. Seven points. They're gold. gold. So technically, to make it to platinum, you only need a couple more cruises. Uh, and you have some time to get there, but um, like Paul said, it sounds like we'll revisit once we see what capacity looks like. Uh, my question, I'm Brandy Lake from uh, Michigan, and living in LA now, but my question is, given the itinerary and that it's a world cruise, just what was some of the thoughts about including more parts of Africa and or if there's some destinations we can't go to, a suggestion wondering if we can cover some other coastal African parts. Yeah, um, we, I, I think I should give this really to the captain and I'll let him take us a bit more through the distance and time and uh, all that end of it. But all our ports are carefully vetted. Uh, it's 274 days. It's a long journey. We looked, uh, you know, when we set out with this thing and I sat in the meeting rooms and we looked at uh, the globe and everything else, where can and where should we go. Um, you know, once you once you get into certain regions, the distances become so far that we would have had to compromise a lot of the other experiences. Uh, otherwise, it would be a 365-day uh, voyage. Um, so that's why we ended up. And um, we, at this stage, we are not planning to make any changes to the itinerary except what you know the region uh, throws us, as, such as uh, Ukraine right now and Russia. But uh, plan voyage changes at this stage, uh, we are no longer able to uh, really consider or work on that. Captain, you know more about nautical navigation than I do. Yeah, of course, uh, we are just, um, of course, the, the company gave us the, the overall picture where we are going, but then the voyage planning uh, is left to us. So we just uh, last week got one extra officer on board dedicated to the detailed voyage planning of, uh, of the entire trip. This is a monumental task and we are about 30% finished with it and working through it. And uh, as Raymond said, at the moment we are not able to do any, any significant changes. Thank you. Josh. Hi, I'm Cynthia Stalker from Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm wondering if we will have guest lecturers on board that will educate us about the destinations that we're going to. Absolutely. Next question. <laughs> we definitely will be. We'll definitely, our, our enrichment program, led off by Allison Ryder and her team, have been all over that, and they keep even adding more and more to it. We're even do, gonna do the local flavors in the different places. We're gonna bring on some folkloric shows and a lot of extra things, headlining entertainers from that region. So we wanna make it very special every time we're in the certain it's areas. Lifestyle enrichment, geography, we are looking at uh, really very great talent. Let me go up here front because I see the hands coming up here again and again. Skip Rath, uh, Watch Hill, Florida. I'm interested on the shareholder benefit program. Is that uh, benefit one per stateroom or one per uh, person that uh, owns the stock? If two people own stock, uh, do we get twice the benefit? One per stateroom. One per stateroom is the answer. Okay. We're going to go over here to Amy. Hi, Andy from Buffalo, New York. Uh, you mentioned when if there's rooms available, you'll be opening up the additional legs of the 17. What about also including people in your own stateroom? Will that be also made available? That's a very good question. Who asked that question? Over here, sorry, I didn't oh. stand up. Oh, thank you, that's a great question. Um, and honestly, one that we have not thought of yet. So um, 
leave that with us to come back to you with an answer to have someone join you in your stateroom. Um, we'll have to think that through. Obviously, if your stateroom can accommodate uh, more people in it, that, that's a must. Um, some of our staterooms, as you know, only hold two people. Some are available for to hold more. Uh, let us come back to you on that. That's a great question. Thanks. Way up in the back. Hi, we're Vanessa and Rob from Port Dover, Ontario, Canada. And uh, it's probably a silly question, but I'm sure we're all going to buy souvenirs along the way. So will there be a way for us to be able to ship or receive stuff while we're on the on, on the ship or the nine months to ship or receive items from family or letters, anything like that? No. Hi, that's a great question and thank you very much. We are currently in negotiations with a company to help and assist with shipment of luggage and we are expanding that conversation. If there are additional ports in which they can support us uh, for you to either receive or also send information out, we expect to have an answer for you uh, early next year. And then, you, you, how many people remember the good old days of what's called a white elephant sale? What ends up happening? Remember that, Raymond? So, chance that we'll probably look into that. And towards the end of the cruise, we'll have a sale for all the people who bought things that realized I didn't want this. <laughs> so then you end up doing an auction. It's kind of fun. It really is a fun thing to do. I remember those. Yes, for sure. All right, we're going to go back up in the very back again. We'll keep rotating around, everybody. We're going to grab you. Don't worry. Hi, I'm Laura from Wisconsin. Are we going to be able to leave a port to go do something and then hop back on in a different port? Yes, uh, wherever it is possible. There, you know, again, there may be some limitations here or there, but wherever there is no regulatory reasons why you couldn't do that, we will, will certainly will make arrangements. For How would we know where it's available or not? Uh, we'll look through that. Naomi is trying to give me a lifeline here. <laughs> Thank you for the question. We are currently working with all the different port authorities and port services to determine which ports will absolutely restrict it and which ones we can move forward with that. And also with a process where we can capture if you know prior to sailing if you need to depart and rejoin us at a later time. And once we have that full process in place, we will certainly communicate that with you. At this moment of time, we do not have a list yet that can indicate which ports are restricted or not. Okay, thank you. And then one last thing. When we booked, you guys mentioned an African safari, and I guess a bunch of us were wondering where that's going to be. Great question. It's exclusive, it's limited. We're still working on it. It'll be South Africa, um, looking at Kruger National Park, Savvy Sands, and a really exclusive lodging. So at the moment, it's still in the works. It's li limited. Um, does that answer your question? I think I've got, just, they're still working on it. And it's gonna be from the leg Dubai as we go into the Red Sea, because there's a number of sea days in there and it comes back into either Aqaba or Safaka, Egypt and then into Cairo and then eventually Israel. So we're looking at returning in there so it would fly from that region to South Africa and back and rejoin. So that's what I can say on the African safari. Stay tuned, that's coming, exclusive. Okay, we're gonna go right down here. Hi, Tom Chong from Beaufort, Georgia. Uh, some of us are still very active, but sometimes our bodies don't agree with us. So, medical question, is there any plans to have a chiropractor on board? And in the alternative, there's a lot of great stuff to eat on board. How about dentistry? Because there's some areas of the world we're visiting, I'm not confident in the dental practices or the chiropractor availability. Jason, amazing question. <laughs> so, we went through that um, thought and uh, we're still working on that. I don't have an answer right now. In terms of the chiropractor, we do not have a chiropractor on board. We do have a good, good spa, an amazing spa. They may they help you, but we don't have a chiropractor. We certainly should go back to you or get back to you with information about the dentist. Okay, okay we're gonna go over to Amy. Hi, I'm Bob Waterman from Titusville, Florida. I just have a clarification on the opting out of the business class airfare because I've gotten two different answers. Um, 
you know, we, we understand the $1,500 per person credit for us that don't need to fly. Um, some people have said, well, you're gonna get that discount off your cruise fare price before you pay your final amount. We were told when we called that we would get it as onboard credit because we've already paid the final amount. And I, and I, so I've heard both answers. And I'm good with either. I mean, yeah. We've already paid the final amount, so we have to get it credited. I'm good with onboard credit too. I just don't know which we're going to do. Yeah, it's a it's a great question. Um, so the, so as you know, the airfare is included with your cruise fare. Um, some people are going to handle the air uh, on your own, which is totally fine. Um, so it will be a um, a cash refund uh, discount. Hopefully that answers your your question. Off of the cruise fare. Off of the cruise fare. Even if, even if you pay, Michael, if you'll, you'll be able full, to get a refund of you'll $1,500 get a refund. per guest. That's right. If you already paid in full, for the you'll U.S. guests. Yeah, it looks like he has a follow-up question. Go ahead, Amy. Yeah. Uh, Joe Thompson, Washington, D.C., uh, fully paid. I just have a question. I really love the program called Royal Up, and even though I love my balcony cabin, man, if I could bid up, I know it's a world cruise, uh, and, and, and money's, well, I'd rather pay the money and get the experiences, so will there be a royal up bid war on the world cruise? <laughs> that is a great question. Thank you for the shout out on uh, royal up. We love that program too. Um, I, you know, royal up is very much uh, dependent on what kind of cabin inventory we have available. I will tell you, this room here, booked almost all of our suites all the way down to the inside cabins. So unless there's some cancellations that happen, quite honestly, I don't, I don't think there's gonna be inventory to be able to bid up because everyone here has, has essentially booked that inventory. Michael, could they bid for a segment? So if they're on for the full, but there happens to be availability in Capitals of Culture, could they upgrade for the final segment? Yes, and of course we will we will know that as we get closer to sale date. Obviously, we need to see all the booking after all the bookings and reservations are made. If there is an open inventory, yes, we'll open it up for for bidding for for upgrades. Okay, we're gonna go in the back. Hi, I'm Julianne from Barefoot Bay, Florida. I am gonna be on the serenade November seventh to December fifth, doing back to back on the Panama Canal. We're going home for five nights, coming back. Can I leave my luggage on the Saturday? <laughs> <five nights? laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Nebo, Nebo is making a note, and Philip is making a note. So just catch us up. Love to. Okay, the gentleman in red, by the way, we're not going to be able to get through all the hands that are raising everybody because more and more hands seem to keep coming up. That's why this question, is a, this uh, email is very, very good. But also we're going to invite everybody in just a few minutes into the Diamond Club, right? If you have any additional questions that we didn't cover, you can go to the Diamond Club and it's still uh, we'll still have some questions and answers in there. But we're going to go to the gentleman right now in red. Hi, my name is Mike Winston. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. And my wife and I are plant-based. So as far as um, uh, the culinary, uh, what type of options will you have? Thank you for the question. Uh, we do have vegan options today uh, on all of our main dining room menus. Uh, so if there's really specific dietary needs with anybody, you know, we'll make sure we're gonna have a great chef team on board and we'll be able to really cater to your needs. Let's go to the top up here. Hello, my name is Denise. My husband, Martin Kral, uh, we're from New York and also Florida. Uh, a lot of the questions that I had have been answered, but just to please summarize for us, what will the medical uh, health care options be on the ship itself? We'd like to hear a rundown of that again. And also to please, um, two months ago, out of the clear blue, I had a dental problem that required oral surgery. So I, I sure do hope that you're going to have a dentist on board. So that's one question. Also, how many shares in the company do we need to hold in order to take advantage of that? Um, uh, 100. 100. 100? 100. Good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the medical, please. All right. Thank and you. dental. Thank you again for that question. 
and I'm gonna answer that question if you tell me and you remember my Spanish name. <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh, so, our ships, as you all very likely have uh, seen, have a full uh, medical team, many doctors, depending on the size of the ship, and many nurses. So for sure, certain aid is not gonna be the exception. But additionally to that, and uh, keeping in mind the, the, the different regions of the world, uh, we're gonna have additional doctors and additional nurses. So hopefully that answers your question in terms of the medical staff. In terms of the dentist, as I mentioned, the other guest, we are still working on that. We think it's reasonable, but I cannot promise you that. We're still working on that. Okay, thank you. Okay, we've got time for one more question. This lady's been patient right up there. Again, more questions can be answered in the Diamond Club next door after this, but go ahead. Hi, I'm Ann. I'm from Fredericksburg, Texas. I originally booked all by myself. So of course I paid double basically for my cabin. Then my daughter jo is joining me. So like the $4,000 we get, we got to add her, which was lovely. But my question is, um, she wants to leave after the first segment in Los Angeles and rejoin us, say, in Barcelona for the last segment. Um, is that all right? Yeah, she, she, she yeah. certainly can do that. Those two destinations I, I know through our current experience that tra there's unrestricted travel, so that shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, I, that's wonderful, thank you. And just a little comment for enrichment. I would love to have a watercolor painting class. Funny like, enough, we were looking into that. Uh, would, uh, yes, we were looking into that particular enrichment. Okay, then I, my last question is, do you have to sign up for the Royal Up program? Because it would be nice to move from our very nice interior cabin. The, the question is, do you just sign up for the Royal Up? You do not have to sign up for okay. it. The way that the Royal Up program will work is, again, and this is all based on assuming we have cabins still available to upgrade. Um, everyone would get a, an email with uh, very clear instructions on how to bid for the upgrade. So okay. you don't have to sign up for anything. Okay. Uh, an email would come to you with a Royal Up opportunity and you can you would be able right. to do it. So no worry to, to sign up for okay, anything. Okay, don't kill me, I have one more question. Yeah. I said last question, not last okay. five <laughs> questions. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. My question is on amenities. I, in, in on this ship, there's, no conditioner for my hair. I haven't found the Kleenex yet. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering what the plans are. Or, yeah. you know, do I need to bring another suitcase full of conditioner and stuff like that? Uh, no, we, we do have, um, we will have amenities in your rooms. And the, yeah, the Kleenex is usually one of the drawers in your, in your stateroom. Um, there's also a hair dryer in there and other uh, informative information. But we will have amenities, we will have a conditioner, shampoo, soaps. Uh, we will uh, make sure you don't need to bring an extra suitcase or even smaller piece of luggage. Unless you, you know, but we, we don't do branding, okay? So if you have a special brand you're relying on, this is up to you, but we will give you our best amenity line. We, you know, we have that source. Um, the hair dryers, uh, actually, no. It's a bit of a safety issue because some of these things are so powerful, they blow our circuits. So that's why we have the shipboard hair dryers. They're all specially sourced. The same is with tea kettles and any other electric equipment. So we, we are very careful on that. Okay, to wrap up today, uh, here, at least inside here, uh, I'm surprised nobody asked about the weather, but I'm sure that's very hard to predict a year in advance, but James, right, got you've got a couple slides for I us, right? I gotta figure it out. James Van Fleet, everybody. All right, so if you've watched the itinerary, good morning, everyone. Have you noticed what we're trying to do? The seasons, the patterns. So we're essentially, we're trying to follow spring and summer. So when you go to pack, when we get a little closer, I'll have a whole video for you as to how to do it, the layers, what type we're going to focus on. It's going to be a lot more of your warm and hot weather clothing 
then you're cold. But we are clearly going to go into some colder weather. Next slide, Michael. Um, some things of how we plan to get you forecast information. I wasn't kidding when I said I'm going to be dedicated to you guys while I'm still covering the rest of the fleet. No matter where I'm at in the world, about three moments of your journey, I'll be with you. But the rest of the time, you will still get a forecast from me in a couple different ways. Of course, on social media, every single day of your journey, I will post a forecast for you for where you're going to be in the world, whether I'm with you or not. And it will be synced up to the time that is your morning not mine. So as you are going and waking up each morning in your stateroom, checking the Twitter page of mine, you will have your forecast for you every single day until you're all the way back in Miami. Secondly, Ken's lovely team is going to help us make a video. I will record it once a week and it will air on our cruise director channel, of course, on your staterooms. That idea there is to just give you a quick summary of what that week's snapshot looks like. Is there anything you guys need to know about as you're planning your excursions and your events? Is there anything that's going to come up and surprise us in the forecast, whether it's rain, fog, hotter weather than we would expect, colder weather than we would expect, things like that, weather of inconvenience. So every single week you'll get that. And then, of course, as I mentioned, I'll be on board with you. Michael, I think if we can go to the next slide, I want to show you that little area down there in South America going to Antarctica, the Drake Passage. Are you guys familiar with the Drake Passage? Okay, for those who are not, not to scare you because we've thought this through, but a friend of ours who works in LA and Seattle, his name's Preston, he's one of our captains. He works the West Coast for us in the Alaska season. He actually made that crossing once with National Geographic. Said everybody puked for three days coming and going. Now, the difference is we're going in January. Out of all 12 months, that statistically is the best month to cross that area from southern Argentina down to Antarctica, Antarctica and back. So that's why, as you were asking questions earlier about Africa and routing and all that, we have to be in certain areas of the world at certain times of the year to make this all work. And that, unfortunately, takes certain regions off the table to make it work nautically. So having said that, if you do enjoy this, I love that question, let the company know. Nobody's saying this has to be the only one we do, and maybe we figure out another way and hit the areas we don't on this one. But to wrap it up, I'll be with you on board for that crossing. I'll be helping our captains and our bridge team navigate the most comfortable and safest route to get down there, up through the Chilean Fords. Then I'm gonna jump off for a couple months, do some other work, and then I'll join you again as we get over into the uh, around India in that area. Because that first leg is gonna be our biggest change, I just wanted to give you a little graphic and a bearing of what we would see. And again, this is the summer, remember? So as we're leaving Miami and we're in the Caribbean, Average temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s and low 90s, and there will be days that are even hotter, as well as when you're in ports of call, as soon as you get away from the water, it will be hotter on land. So just in planning, within one month's time, our temperatures are going to be near 100 degrees to only then topping out around low 50s, mid 50s, and overnight temperatures in the 30s and 40s. Some of you may be surprised at how warm that might sound for Antarctica. Elephant Island and the areas we're visiting, the water temperature is going to be in the low 40s to mid 40s when we're there. So that's why those temperatures are moderated by the sea, of course. Uh, next slide, Michael. And I think just to give you uh, some precip precipitation and wind speeds, just to kind of let you know, there's not much rain in that area. Out of all of January, about 10 days on average, we would see some rainfall. So it's a great time of year to be down in Argentina, Chile, and of course into the Southern Hemisphere, and then one more. Um, one other area I wanted to give you a heads up, the second portion, the February to May, um, that I believe will be some of our hottest weather. We'll still have hot water, weather in the Middle East when we're in Jordan and in Oman and those places, but this I think is going to stand out the most because we, we, we will be coming from the cooler weather of Antarctica and then after the crossing of the Pacific. So our days in Sydney and Auckland, and I've been down there in the Januarys and Februarys, it is just as hot as our September and August, guys, in America. And I know most of us uh, that are going on this are Americans. So be thinking that mindset, even though the calendar is going to say February and March, 
think September, August kind of weather, that's what you're going to want when we're in Australia and New Zealand. And then as we transition back up into the Northern Hemisphere, this is where your mind is. We get into May and June, it's probably going to start going a little haywire because you will have only had one season or a few weeks of cool weather. We're going to go from blistering hot weather to spring and then summer again. So it will be the never ending summer. So keeping that mindset, that will help you as to how to pack and what to get ready for. And as I said, we'll post videos as we get closer to get into more specifics. Any other slides, Michael? As I know we're running over on time, you can keep uh, fast forwarding. Um, no, I think that's it. I, I will join you uh, from India over to the Middle East, and then I'll be with you again up in uh, the Baltics and Scandinavia. Generally, the higher latitudes is where we can typically find rougher seas at times. That's when I'll be with you to help keep you as safe and comfortable as possible. So I know we're running over on time. I want to wrap it there. I will be with you around the ship. I'd love to talk to you if you have any questions. And of course, you can email me if you want. If you have any specific questions, it's very easy. J Van Fleet, my last name, J Van Fleet at rccl.com. It's the same ending as the World Cruise at rccl.com. But anything specific, I'd love to help you. Thank you, James. Excuse me. Thank you, James. Give James a nice round of applause. He will be there with you, as he said, all along the way. Well, this has been a great morning so far. I want to remind you there were still, of course, a couple of people who had their hands up. Only for those people who really want a question answered right now, we're going to invite you to go to the Diamond Club. We cannot bring all of you into the Diamond Club right now. It's not big enough. So, again, if you do have a question, go in the, into the Diamond Club. We'll be over there in just a little while. But also today at 445, don't forget, we're going to meet you in the Aqua Theater. Actually, I won't be there. I'll be filming with Michael in the Facebook Live, So, but you guys can be watching it on the screen. It starts at 5 o'clock. And then don't forget, you guys are going to have the best opportunity because coming up at 545, right from that area, we're going to do a fireworks show. And it's going to be from the back end of the ship, so you guys will be right there and you'll be able to see it. So that's all coming up. Before you leave, Raymond has a few final words of thank you. So Raymond, take it away. Yeah, on, on behalf of Major Bailey, um, and he is the one who uh, challenged us to come up with the ultimate world cruise. A uh, number of us were in the room when he threw out the suggestion, and we went to work. It is an ultimate world cruise. Uh, we have a ultimate team assembled here. This is a big part of your World Cruise team. There are, you know, as I mentioned earlier, many more people involved. We have now, um, the last few weeks, really worked hard to establish um, the communication side of things. I know it's been a little bit shaky to begin with, but um, the uh, Facebook website, but the um, info you received earlier where you put your questions to, we have social care, we have social engagement, so we really are ready for whatever uh, is on your mind to give you quick and concise answers. And if something takes us still a few weeks or a month to work through it, uh, trust us, we, we are fully focused. It's not just a side job for anybody. This is a fully dedicated team. And of course, our mariners here, Captain Stig and our hotel directors, they are already working on your behalf to ensure uh, Serenade of the Seas is ready when you get there. So uh, from my side and from all of us, Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you here with us and we'll see you later this afternoon.